Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, today we're working on Project X. As you can see, it doesn't want to start. And uh, my first thought was dead batteries, but I have reason to believe that's not the case. Now, the 7.3s are known for being very difficult to start when the batteries get low or the temperature gets cold or for some reason your glow plugs aren't working. But here, I really don't believe that's the case at all. Uh, I'll link to a video down below here where I replaced the glow plug controller on it not that long ago. It's actually been a couple of years, but either way, uh, I believe all that system is still working fine. The batteries aren't even that old. And if you look right there, you can see that the batteries were at full charge before I tried that start attempt and it still failed. Miserably. And it is cold out, but it's not that cold out. It's only about 52 degrees and... You know, a healthy 7.3 shouldn't have any trouble starting at 52 degrees. Until you start getting under the 30s and below is when you start seeing the issues typically, and we're not anywhere near that. So I've definitely been having a little bit of trouble with this truck. And in fact, it's been sitting right here for more than a month now without being driven. So the last time we used it was when we went to Boston. So Talon, Katie, and I drove this truck to the airport to fly out to Boston. And then when Talon flew home, he drove the truck home. But... We charged the batteries up before we went and we even plugged it in the night before we left for the airport because we were leaving really early in the morning and it was going to be cold and I just didn't want any issues when we needed to get to the airport. So if I warm the truck up with the block heater, all this problem goes away. When I do plug in with the block heater and the truck's warmed up, we don't really have as much of a problem. And even once we get the truck started, we can drive it all day long, start and stop as long as it completely cool down the starter works so it seems like the starter wants to work when it's warmed up but when it's cold somehow there's just not enough flow there not enough uh, speed i know again it sounds like batteries and it sounds like low plugs but everything was up to charge and worked good we went to the airport we flew to boston talent came home he could not get the truck to start when he got back to the airport and had to get a jump start and it and it took a while he finally got it started but it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It, it, it delayed him getting home quite a bit. And I know, again, that still sounds like a battery issue, right? Well, I'm not 100% convinced, and this is why. If you guys go back to the F550 project that we did recently, where we had some issues getting that truck started, and yeah, that ended up being an injector problem as well, but part of the problem was we couldn't get the engine to turn over fast enough, and I had brand new batteries in it, and even with brand new batteries and the charger set to jump start, we still couldn't get it to turn fast enough. Again, we diagnosed glow plugs and everything, and everything checked out good. What it ended up being was the starter. Yeah, there were other issues there as well, but once we put the new starter in it, the thing turned over like a bat out of hell, and the 7.3 trucks really need a fast-turning starter. And I guess it's pretty common for these starters to wear down over time and just not turn as fast. And uh, they don't just stop and fail like a lot of cars. They, they'll progressively do this. And this one has progressively been slowing down for years. And it's just, it's been so small, you didn't really notice it till it really became a problem. So I'm not saying that I absolutely do not have a battery problem. Truth is, with the starter going bad over years, putting more load on the battery than it should have, we may have kind of, you know, worn these batteries out a little bit. But in the... The thought of experimentation and the efforts of science, we're going to just replace the starter and nothing else and see if it fixes the problem. And uh, of course, I'm going to let the batteries charge back up while I'm doing it. But I'm hoping that with no other changes that we will see a significant difference and, uh, you know, kind of learn something there and, and verify that it was indeed a starter issue. And when it's all said and done, if I have to put new batteries in it as well, then that's just what we'll do. But it got me thinking, this truck has like 479,000 miles on it. I've had it for well over 10 years. I've replaced a lot of stuff on it. I've replaced drivetrain. I've replaced the transmission, wheels, tires, brakes, steering, suspension, water pump, alternator, high pressure oil pump. I've replaced a lot of stuff on this never replaced the starter and like i said well over 10 years so even if the starter wasn't the issue we're definitely not going to hurt it by putting a new one on
All right, so I ran up to my local Napa, and actually, a couple weeks ago, I bought the starter. It's been sitting in the truck since a while. Um, now, I opted for the Napa starter, but not the cheapest one they had. This is a brand new, non-rebuilt, and you can see that they actually include like a little dyno sheet where they test it before it leaves. And it is the OEM style starter for it, so everything should bolt in nice and easy. There's only three bolts and then the two wire connections. You see down the flange, there are three bolt holes that bolt it into the transmission assembly. And then here we've got where the battery cable will go on, and then the starter signal wire will attach right there. All right, but before we climb down there and take the old starter out, I'm going to disconnect the batteries. That way we don't accidentally arc something. And uh, I'm actually going to bring out a bigger battery charger to get these batteries charging up while we do the installation, just because the battery tender will probably take too long. And I do want to make sure that the batteries are fully charged when we go to start it. All right, I've got both batteries disconnected and I've got my larger charger on there. Now I've only got it on a 10 amp charge, but that's more than 10 times the amount of charge the battery tender will put into it because that's only like 0.75 amps if i'm not mistaken so more than 10 times faster i want to get it on the one battery if this one charges up i'll move it to the other battery but this is the primary start battery anyways because that's the one that the starter actually connects to so that one being peak would be better than the other one being peak but they all kind of work together either way but not as efficient as you might think all right so now i am going to jump underneath and take the starter out I already know that there's no room down there to really record very well. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's three bolts and two connections. I think you guys can figure it out. All right, how dirty is my face? All right, not too terribly bad. All right, guys, got the old one out and the new one in, as you can see. Same exact style, nothing's different there. Like I said, relatively easy. It probably only took 15 or 20 minutes to change it out. You know, the tedious part for me, because I've got fairly large hands and big sausage fingers, is making the electrical connections. It's in an area where I've got to kind of bend my hand in a weird way to get the little teeny tiny nut on the stud there for the sort of relay side, the, the signal activation, basically. But other than that, pretty plain and simple. The top bolt is a little challenging to get to, but with an extension, I was able to reach it. All in all, everything went smooth. The old one was pretty greasy, so I did stop in the middle and wash my hands before I put the new one in, just so I didn't grease up the new one. Not that it matters, it's gonna end up greasy anyways. That's just the way my brain works. So now it's time to hook the batteries back up and see if we fixed our problem. Unfortunately, as you see here, we are not all the way charged up yet, but I don't know, maybe I'll give it a little bit more time. It is about lunchtime. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll let, maybe I'll hook it all back up, leave the charger on it while I go eat some lunch and then come back and we'll see how she does. All right, so after cleaning up my tools, I went inside for lunch and Katie did not have lunch finished yet. So she's just gonna take her a few more minutes so maybe we'll just try this anyways. Um, it's only been on charge for about 10 minutes. Maybe, just maybe, I'm curious. I wanna see even with a not 100% charged battery, let's, let's see how it does. I figure worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, I can still leave it on charge for longer, but my curiosity just wants to see what it does right now with this state with nothing being changed other than the starter. All right, battery charger is disconnected. Let's see what she does. Well, it didn't start, but as you can hear, it's turning over a whole lot faster than it was with the old starter. So let's let the batteries charge up and see how it does.
All right, so there, I just tried to use the jump start function on the jump box, and it didn't really seem to provide much benefit. And then I noticed afterwards I was checking these connections, and the ground to the charger was very, very warm. If you look closely here, I've got another issue going on. So here, where the wire from the charger is going into the alligator clamp, look, those wires are all frayed. It is just barely hanging on, so it's not really providing the current that it should. You know, I've had this charger for probably 10 years. I guess it's time to redo the clamps. So maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, take the dually, spin it around, hook the jumper cables to it, and uh, see how it does that way. All right, with the dually set at high idle, we're uh, definitely getting charging voltage over to the excursion. Uh, only about a half volt of voltage drop between the two. So we'll just let it sit there for a little while and uh, see where it goes. All right, so it's been 10 or 15 minutes with the dually charging the excursion. So I think I'm gonna shut the dually off and try it. Now, part of me wants to do it with the dually running. Just worried about the noise in the recording, so it's gonna be really loud. I don't know if I can set you up in a spot where you can still hear how well the excursion starts or not. So I think the best bet is just go ahead and shut the dually off and uh, we'll give it a try, see if it spins over any faster. As you can see, it's definitely turning over faster now. Definitely fast enough to start, and it wants to start. Uh, we got smoke, so it means it's getting fuel. I'm not sure what the next step is, but we'll see. Hi, right, guys. I got it running. Didn't have the damn camera on. Anyway, so after that last clip, um, I started the dually back up and just because I knew I'd use some battery charge trying to get the start and I let it run. Katie had lunch ready so I went back inside and uh, ate lunch. Came back up, turned it over one time and it fired right up. It's almost like maybe it was just flooded. Maybe from the trying to start it, it dumped a bunch of fuel in there. It was too wet and it just took a while for it to kind of dry out because this time it fired up with almost no issue. Which is good, because I was almost afraid I was going to have to close this video on a bad note and not have the job completed. And actually, I did plug in the block heater while I went in for lunch, but I couldn't have been in there more than 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes, absolutely tops. So it wasn't really long enough. Usually it takes about three hours or so for a block heater to actually get an engine warm. It's basically just a heating element that's in one of the uh, cooling jackets. And so it, it warms up the coolant and then it will eventually warm up the engine. But it, it takes time. It doesn't happen that fast. Now, in fact, when I turned the key on, the temperature gauge never moved. And normally when I leave it plugged in, if I know it's going to be a cold start and I know that I need it to be able to fire up for me, you'll see that needle move up almost a quarter of the way before you even start the truck, which lets me know that, you know, the cooling system is warmed up, which transfers heat into the block as well. I don't really think that that contributed much to it, but it may have. Well guys, I let it run for a good half an hour and then uh, I jumped in it, took it for a drive. I actually drove over 
to the new shop and uh, hung out there for a couple of minutes, left the truck running the whole time. And, uh, and now I'm back at the house. You see, it's getting dark. I didn't mean to stay at the other shop that long, but while I was there, this beautiful buck walked out into the hayfield next door. And I just kind of sat there and watched him for a while. I did try to get a clip, but he was pretty far away. So it's not gonna be real clear, but I'll throw that in right here. But after the excursion was up and running, everything seems to be fine with it. So even though I thought I was gonna end up closing the video on a sad note and having a fail, it turns out that uh, it's not a fail after all. Now, once I got back here and I parked it, I shut it off and I started it back up and it is turning over amazingly faster than it was with the old one. I'm gonna set up the tripod here real quick so that you guys can see how much faster it starts. amazingly better like i said um i will say this in the 10 years plus that i've owned this truck it has never started that fast and easy ever so chances are the starter was probably on its way out even when i got the truck and it still lasted 10 years but that goes to show the signs you know it's like i was saying earlier it's not always obvious that it's a starter had I known this, I would have changed it many years ago, most likely. But all in all, everything is good. Now I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm not going to plug it in. I'm not going to put a battery charger on it. And uh, we're going to come out and see how it starts in the morning. And hopefully there's no problem. So if you don't see a follow-up to this, all is good. Um, if we have other issues, maybe there is. So if there's an issue, then I will definitely start load testing the batteries and see if we need to replace them. But uh, right now I'm feeling pretty confident. So we're going to leave it at that. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.